let's get back our motherboard chassis. Needless to say that things are getting serious, so let's jump right in. On your screen marked in red the 9 screw razors which will help us secure our motherboard in place. Make sure to align perfectly the screw razors and the holes on your motherboard. Remember when tightening the screws on your motherboard, finger tight is quite enough, don't overdo it. The CPU socket on this particular board is very interesting. It is both compatible with AM3 and AM4 cooling sockets. In our case, since we are going to go for an AM4 socket, we have to remove the AM4 plastic holders which came with the motherboard. Behold our very powerful and good looking 32GB of DDR4 RAM. As for storage, nothing less than a full terabyte of M.2 SSD yumminess. In both cases, their installation is quite straightforward. And we are going to start with our RAM. This motherboard comes with a dual channel configuration, meaning that we can run up to 64GB of DDR4 RAM frequenced up to 3.2GHz. But in our build, we are going to go with 32GB of DDR4 RAM frequenced to a maximum of 3GHz. On the right hand side of our sockets, you will see four little locks that we will need to open. When inserting your memory stick, make sure that you do put it in the right direction. A notch on the memory stick itself should help you doing that. Gently insert your RAM module in the socket. Apply a slight pressure first on the left and then on the right. Your RAM should now be solidly secured on the motherboard. Let's move to our M.2 solid state drive installation. Here we have a 2280 solid state drive stick to install and that refers to the length of our memory stick which is 22.80 cm long. But before connecting it we need to install its screw razor. Once done, simply slide in our M.2 solid state drive into its connector. Secure it with its 2mm screw and we are done. Guess what? It is time to install our Ryzen 7 1800X CPU and its AM4 compatible water block from EKWB. It doesn't look like much, but boy oh boy was it difficult to get the right one for this build. Next, the mighty Ryzen 7 1800X, finally. And as you can see, the box is still factory sealed. Let's do the unboxing. You should have seen the panic face I made when I realized that this box was empty. Nothing in there. And actually, the processor was there, simply hidden in a much smaller box on the side of the bigger empty box. I am not even going to waste my time in speculation. I'm just going to throw the box and carry on. There must be a reason why AMD did this, I just don't care to know it. And here's a processor, and look at that. The pins are actually on the processor and not on the motherboard. It makes the installation of the CPU so much easier. It is such a 90s move, but a move I like. Alright, back to our AM4 socket. To install the CPU, a couple of things we need to take a look at. First, the socket levier. Just put it up and bring in your processor. Make sure not to touch the pins and hold it by its sides. And before we try to put it in, first you need to make sure that the pyramid on the CPU matches the direction of the pyramid engraved onto the AM4 CPU socket. Now, once that's done, gently press on the CPU on the socket. Now, simply secure the CPU in place by pushing down onto the CPU socket levier. Next in line, we are going to put some thermal paste compound on our CPU die. I usually put a little bit more than necessary, so don't worry too much if you did not put as much as I did. And finally, now is the time to put on our water block. But first, let's remove the adhesive paper which protects the water block copper plate. Then, simply put in place the water block so its screws match perfectly the provided AM4 screw razors. Tighten the water block screws into place, secure the whole shebang, and we're done for this part. Alright, exciting! I remember this one. Now is the time to put back the couple of plates that we had removed in the beginning of our build. The lower chassis plate and our motherboard. Alright, let's try to get a better angle. Before putting any plate back inside the chassis, we are going to install the IO shield. 
Now the IO shield is very easy to put on, no need of screws or anything like that. Simply put it into place, make sure that the audio jacks do point this way as shown on your screen and simply press on the IO shield four corners. It should pop right into place. Perfect. Now let's put in place both our lower chassis plate and the motherboard. The lower chassis plate is very easy to fit in, just make sure not to forget to secure it with its two thumb screws. Similar operation for our motherboard plate, simply slide it in gently and make sure that the peripherals perfectly match with the IO shield openings. Once they are aligned, you will need to slide the motherboard plate onto the two screws already placed onto the chassis. And finally, screw in the remaining four thumb screws to secure the plate onto the chassis. Alright, so we're done for now. On the next section of our build, we are going to go straight in the custom water cooling system. So yeah, that one is tricky. Get ready.